In the opening scenes, we see people having fun in a nightclub. A group of guys discusses work and personal life. At some point, they notice a woman on the couch who is so drunk that she can't control herself. The guys joke that women like her are asking for trouble. One of them, Jerry approached the woman and asked if everything was okay. She said she was looking for her phone, her speech was slurred. Jerry offered to drive her because without her phone, she wouldn't be able to call a taxi anyway. The woman was unable to refuse or agree. Jerry called a taxi himself, and they went together but not to her place, to Jerry's. There, he offered her another drink, even though it was obvious she'd had enough. After that, Jerry began complimenting the woman. At one point, the woman said she needed to lie down. Jerry took it as an invitation to action, despite the request to stop. But Jerry had no idea that the woman wasn't actually drunk. She deliberately lured him into a trap to teach a lesson. The next morning, 29-year-old Cassandra Thomas left Jerry's apartment and walked barefoot down the street. Seeing her, guys from the construction site started joking that she had a good time last night. However when the woman began to stare at them intently, the guys didn't find it so funny anymore. Jerry became just another checkmark on Cassie's long list. She lives with her parents, Stanley and Susan and works in a coffee shop. The father and mother noticed that their daughter started staying late at work a lot. The coffee shop owner and Cassie's only friend, Gail, thinks she could find a better job, but Cassie is content as she is. When Gail told Cassie that their mutual acquaintance saw her the night before in a bar very drunk, she said he probably got something wrong. In reality Cassie goes to a new nightclub every week in search of victims willing to take advantage of helpless women. One day a guy who was buying coffee recognized Cassandra. It was Ryan Cooper, whom she studied with in medical college many years ago. When her former classmate invited Cassie on a date, she was surprised but gave him her number. Ryan seemed like a nice guy. In the evening, Cassie applied provocative makeup to attract the attention of yet another scumbag at the club. Neil turned out to be a romantic who abuses substances and writes a novel. At one point, he told Cassie that he didn't understand why women use so much makeup since they are much prettier without it. Pretending to be drunk, Cassie asked him to call a taxi for her. Neil didn't want to let her go, but when he realized that Cassie wasn't actually drunk, he got scared. Cassie said that every week she hunts for jerks like him. Neil admitted his mistake, asking Cassie to simply leave. Since Neil wasn't entirely hopeless, Cassie did just that, advising him never to treat women like that again. Cassie does all this for her childhood friend Nina. The next morning, the parents prepared a gift for Cassie. She had forgotten that today was her birthday. Susan wonders how one can forget their own birthday. 30-year-old Cassie has no friends, no boyfriend, dropped out of college, works a low-paying job and still lives with her parents. All of this saddens Susan. The father on the other hand tries to support Cassie. Despite her sour mood, she opened the gift that contained a suitcase. Of course Cassie understood that the parents were hinting that she should move out soon. Gail asked Cassie why she shouldn't really start living on her own. If Cassie found a better job, she could afford to rent a place, but she doesn't need it. Ryan returned to the coffee shop because last time Cassie gave him the wrong number. Ryan hopes that Cassie will agree to go on a date with him, but the girl said she's not interested. However Ryan was very persistent. He has liked Cassie since college, and he's not going to give up just like that. Learning that the daughter was going to have lunch with a friend, her parents were very pleased. Ryan turned out to be different from other guys. When he asked why she dropped out of college, Cassie didn't know how to answer that question. Ryan became a highly skilled surgeon, and Cassie also had every chance of success, but for some reason she didn't want it. After the cafe, they took a walk chatting sweetly. Suddenly Ryan asked Cassie if she minded coming over to his place. This moment spoiled their date, and Cassie left feeling disappointed. Later, Cassie arrived at the clinic where Ryan works. She didn't even know herself why she came. Cassie just wanted to see Ryan again, knowing that last time he invited her over, he didn't mean anything bad. Ryan's shift was just about to end, and they agreed to have dinner together. Gail noticed the changes in her friend, who for the first time in a long while didn't look melancholic. Ryan waited for Cassie to finish her shift at the coffee shop. Gail amused herself by teasing them. Ryan was surprised to learn that Cassie doesn't keep in touch with anyone from college. He on the contrary keeps in touch with almost everyone. When Ryan mentioned Alex Monroe, who is getting married to a girl from a modeling agency, Cassie felt like the ground was slipping from under her feet. Ryan mentioned that he often meets Alex, who works as an anesthesiologist at the same clinic. In the evening, Cassie found Alex on social media. Apparently everything is going well in his life, and Cassie couldn't bear the thought. She added Alex to her list. Soon Cassie was supposed to meet an old acquaintance at a restaurant. Cassie poured ginger ale into her glass, and champagne into the other girl's glass. Shortly Madison McPhee came. Cassie pretended to be glad to see her. Madison is a mother of two and dedicates her whole life to them. Cassie raised a toast to old friends. 
Madison had no idea that Cassie's glass didn't contain champagne. Meanwhile, Cassie kept refilling Madison's glass with alcohol, pretending to be interested in conversations about marriage, husbands and such. When Madison was drunk enough, Cassie said she wanted to talk about why she dropped out of college. A few years ago when their classmate Nina was drunk, Alex took advantage of the situation. After that, Nina sought help from Madison but she didn't believe her just like many others. Now Madison is trying to justify herself by saying that Nina had a bad reputation in college, so it's possible she just slandered Alex. Realizing that Madison hadn't changed, Cassie left her alone at the table in a drunken state and approached a certain man, handing him the hotel room key and an envelope with money. The next morning, Cassie received several voicemail messages from Madison, who didn't even remember what happened. Madison woke up in the hotel room, not knowing how she got there. Cassie never called her back. Later, she went to the campus and asked a certain girl for directions. Cassie pretended to be a makeup artist and said that a supposedly popular music group was shooting a video here. The enthusiastic girl got into her car without a second thought. As planned, Cassie found Elizabeth Walker, the dean of the medical faculty. Cassandra introduced herself as Daisy and said she wanted to resume her studies. Elizabeth asked Cassie why she left college, and the girl reminded her of what happened to Nina Fisher. A few years ago during a party, Alex Monroe took her to his room. His friends watched and laughed while he did whatever he wanted. Elizabeth doesn't remember Nina Fisher, but she remembers Alex Monroe, who occasionally lectures at the college. Elizabeth is convinced that Nina slandered Alex, especially since she was drunk. Realizing that the dean didn't acknowledge her mistake, Cassie told Elizabeth that she introduced her daughter to the same guys, Alex's friends. Right now she's drinking with them. Elizabeth immediately started calling her daughter, but the girl's phone was with Cassie. Elizabeth panicked, demanding to know which room in the dormitory her daughter was in. Cassie replied that it's the same one where Nina was. At first Elizabeth was hysterical, yelling at Cassie, but when she realized it was futile, she admitted her mistake. Everything is different when it comes to loved ones, not strangers. Of course Cassie didn't actually kidnap Amber. She just wanted to teach Elizabeth a lesson. After that, Cassie left. When some guy on the road started insulting her, she silently got out of the car and began smashing the windows of his car. The guy called her crazy but was afraid to get out of the car. Cassie hates all men and wants only one thing, revenge. On the way home, Cassie ran into Ryan. She completely forgot they had plans to go to the movies. Apologizing Cassie said they could meet another time. At night, Cassie once again entered another bar in search of a new victim. She pretended to be drunk and caught the attention of a guy who was going to take her to his house. Near the bar Ryan who was here with his friends, noticed them. Cassie was provocatively dressed and seemed to be leaving with a stranger, so naturally Ryan interpreted it one way. Cassie wanted to explain herself, but Ryan left. Realizing that Cassie was actually sober, the guy Paul changed his mind about leaving with her. He had heard about the woman who pretends to be drunk to trap guys. Cassie mentioned that there were many like her in the city and she wasn't even the craziest. The threat worked. The next day Cassie visited Jordan Green, Alex Monroe's lawyer. He no longer practiced law and had been waiting for judgment day for himself all these years. Due to guilt, Jordan experienced a nervous breakdown. Seven years ago he had threatened Nina, forcing her to withdraw charges against Alex. Previously Jordan who only cared about his career, received bonuses for settling cases before it went to court. Now he couldn't sleep at night and couldn't forgive himself. However, Cassie was able to forgive him. Unlike Madison, Jordan realized his guilt and was very sorry for what he had done. Receiving forgiveness, Jordan felt a heavy burden lift from his shoulders. Cassie tentatively hired a man to punish Jordan Green, but she abandoned her plan to get revenge on him. After that, Cassie visited Nina's mother, who was aware of her hobby of luring men into traps. The woman believed Cassie should stop because that's what Nina would have wanted. Cassie knows the woman is right. What Cassie regrets is not going to the party with Nina on that fateful day, but the past cannot be undone. After that, Cassie decided to completely abandon her revenge plan. She would no longer visit Alex's social media page and wouldn't attend his bachelor party. With determination, Cassie approached Ryan and asked for his forgiveness. Cassie doesn't know how to explain the incident in the bar to him, but she promised that such behavior would not happen again and asked for another chance. Ryan isn't sure he can trust Cassie now. Realizing that Ryan wasn't ready to forgive her, Cassie left. Her familiar life continued, but now it seemed meaningless. But one day Ryan came to the coffee shop and suggested having lunch together. Cassie gladly agreed, and they kissed. For the first time in a long while, Cassie laughed sincerely and simply lived. Ryan was the man of her dreams. Someone like him surely couldn't hurt any woman. Thus began their happy days. They spent all their time together, feeling like they were made for each other. Soon Cassie introduced Ryan to her parents. They were happy that their daughter had finally found her love. 
Ryan was not only gallant and with a good sense of humor but also had a good profession. When dinner was over, Stanley thanked the daughter for introducing them to her boyfriend. He knows it wasn't easy. Nina was like a daughter to Stanley and Susan, and they missed her as much as Cassie did. Ryan was delighted with Cassie's parents. He constantly repeated to her how amazing she was and how lucky he was. At that moment, they confessed their love to each other. Everything went well until Madison called out to Cassie on the street. Madison desperately wanted to know what happened that night after their meeting and why she woke up in the hotel. Cassie assured Madison that she had nothing with that guy. Hearing this, Madison felt relieved. However, there was another reason why she came to Cassie. When they entered the house, Madison confessed that her old phone had a video from that same party. Madison placed the phone on the table, telling Cassie she could do whatever she deemed necessary with it. Madison just wants to get rid of this burden forever. Before leaving, she asked Cassie never to call her again. Cassie hesitated for a long time to take the phone, but she had to face her fear. Watching the video, Cassie couldn't hold back her tears, but the worst part was that among the students was the person she loved with all her heart. Cassie didn't want to accept it, but denying what she saw means not believing her own eyes. It turns out she doesn't know Ryan at all. Coming to Ryan's workplace, she asked him for a private conversation and showed him the video. Ryan didn't want to watch it, justifying himself by saying he was a teenager at the time and very drunk. But Cassie knows for sure that Ryan and the other guys knew exactly what was going on. She intends to send the video to all of Ryan's colleagues, friends and family members right now. But she may not do so if Ryan tells her where Alex Monroe's bachelor party will be held. Ryan had no choice but to give Cassie what she wanted. Ryan doesn't consider himself a bad person since he didn't do anything during that party. Cassie found this statement simply laughable. An action is no less a crime. Pretending to be a dancer, Cassie went to Alex Monroe's bachelor party, which was held at a country house. Alex didn't expect a dancer to come and thought his friends had arranged a surprise for him. Cassie's been giving guys drinks. None of them knew that something was mixed into the drinks. Then Cassie took Alex to the second floor. He felt uncomfortable, saying he loved his fiancée and didn't want to betray her. Cassie assured him it would just be a private dance, and the handcuffs were a precaution in case he let himself go too far. Eventually Alex gave in. But when the dancer introduced herself as Nina Fisher, he panicked. The Nina Fisher he knew was no longer alive. Alex started calling for help, and Cassie hinted that all his friends were sleeping soundly. Alex realized he was facing Nina's friend. He denied his guilt, claiming Nina was okay with what was happening, but Cassie knows for sure that's not true, and the video confirms it. Alex had no idea that his friend Joe was filming everything. Now he can't deny his guilt and is ready to give Cassie whatever she wants. If everyone finds out the truth, Alex's life will be ruined. However Cassie doesn't need money. After that party, Nina who was one of the top students, dropped out of college. Cassie also dropped out to take care of her friend. Nevertheless, Cassie always dreamed of becoming a doctor, and now she has a chance to practice her skills. Alex begged her to stop, but Cassie is determined to avenge her best friend. That incident destroyed Nina who was a beautiful cheerful girl. Cassie wants Nina's name to stay with Alex forever, so she planned to leave it on the guy's skin. However, Alex managed to break free and subjected Cassie to asphyxiation, taking her life. After doing this, Alex couldn't come to his senses for a long time. One of his hands was still not free. Morning came. Entering the room on the second floor, Joe thought it had been a hot night, but Alex in tears said the dancer was lifeless. Joe didn't immediately believe him, but seeing Cassie's face, he understood that Alex was telling the truth. Crying Alex lied that he didn't know how or why it happened. Joe reassured his friend, convincing him it was an accident. If no one finds out about it, Alex won't go to prison. They'll just lie and say they saw the dancer leave during the night. Alex and Joe got rid of the evidence. The fire took this secret with it. Seeing this, Alex could barely hold back his nausea. Susan and Stanley reported their daughter missing to the police, mentioning Cassie's boyfriend. The detective immediately went to Ryan's workplace, questioning him about Cassandra Thomas. Ryan said they were dating but broke up a few days ago and hadn't seen each other since. Hearing that Cassie was missing, Ryan was shocked but didn't tell the detective where she might have gone. The detective speculated that Cassie might have been mentally unstable, and Ryan confirmed that it was possible. The detective thanked him for his cooperation and left. The day of Alex Monroe and his beloved Anastasia's wedding arrived. They took their marriage vows to each other. Joe congratulated the newlyweds. Ryan was also present. Suddenly Ryan received a scheduled message from Cassie. Earlier Jordan received a package from Cassandra Thomas containing Madison's phone with that very video. There was also a letter in which Cassie revealed her plans to go to Alex Monroe's bachelor party. In her message to Ryan, Cassie wrote that this wasn't the end. At that moment, all the guests at the wedding heard sirens of police cars. Ryan and Joe immediately understood that it was over for them. In the coffee shop, 
Gail found an envelope containing a necklace in the shape of half a heart with Cassie's name. Cassandra wore a similar necklace with Nina's name. The police discovered the body, and the wedding was interrupted. Joe fled, and Alex was arrested. Thus Cassandra exacted her revenge, fulfilling the promise she made to her friend. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.